science of the walking dead! Some bulgy! How did zombies go from voodoo to video games? The answer lies in the history of Haiti and Hollywood. Zombies first appeared in Haitian folklore as corpses reanimated by sorcerers, but they had no will or personality of their own. They were used as slaves or tools by their masters. However, when Hollywood got hold of the zombie concept, things changed dramatically. The first zombie movie, Night of the Living Dead, introduced the idea of zombies as flesh-eating monsters created by a cosmic radiation. This movie spawned a whole genre of horror films that explored different ways of making zombies, such as viruses, parasites or curses. Some of these films, like The Walking Dead and World War Z, also showed how humans would cope with a zombie apocalypse. Zombies became more than just mindless creatures. They became symbols of fear, death and survival. There are too many variations on the zombie theme, but in this video, we will be looking at the slow shuffling zombies from the hit TV series, The Walking Dead. So, let's dive into the world of zombie science, where brains are both a delicacy and a research subject. Over to Professor Brian Sox. In the world of zombie science, understanding the anatomy of the undead is crucial. Researchers have discovered that zombies have a remarkably slow metabolism which explains their leisurely pace. Zombologists, that's the name of the people who study zombies, have observed that zombies, despite their decomposing state, tend to form their own social circles. They're calling it the deadly friendly zone, where zombies awkwardly shuffle together in search of brains and emotional support. Who said the undead couldn't have a sense of camaraderie? The reason zombies roam in packs, it's actually a massive support group. They meet to mourn about the challenges of being undead, discuss their decay-related insecurities, and share tips on surviving in a world that just doesn't understand their unique needs. In the culinary world, zombies have put a unique spin on the farm-to-table concept. It's more like grave to plate. Chefs are experimenting with brain-based recipes and exploring the delicate art of pairing grey matter with a fine Chianti. Don't worry, we're not in any danger here. It's a known fact that zombies don't eat felt. <coughs> Excuse me? Over to Feltman for the science bit. Meet Steve. He's one of our crush test zombies. Put some pants on, Steve. No one wants to see zombie plumbing. That's better. Fear not, dear viewers, for the science of zombies as we know it from movies and pop culture remains firmly in the realm of fiction. The undead rising from their graves is more a product of our imagination than anything rooted in scientific reality. Let's take a light-hearted look at why zombie apocalypse is unlikely through zombiology. Okay, let's get Steve in the lab. He's just shuffling around and moaning. Biological feasibility. The human body is a complex machine and reanimating the dead would require some serious rewiring of biological systems. While viruses and parasites can manipulate behavior in nature, the idea of a virus reanimating the dead is pure science fiction. Bodies decompose rather rapidly, and bringing them back to life is a tad more complicated than the movie Magic Serum. Lack of cognitive function. Zombies are often portrayed as mindless creatures mm. with an insatiable appetite for brains and legs and hands, etc. However, true reanimation would require some level of cognitive function which is challenging to achieve once the brain has expired. Energy source. Living organisms need energy to function. Zombies, however, don't eat for subsistence. They feast on brains. Because, well, it's a zombie thing. Incidentally, your brain makes up 2% of your body weight, 20% of your daily energy intake, and 1,500 to 2,000 fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. But it's still very hard to get to. There's other things. 
just as juicy and just as nutritious on the human body. But uh, we've already seen that one. Without a functioning digestive system, it's a mystery how they could generate the energy required for basic bodily functions. This can explain why we never see zombie poo. Muscle decay. One of the main issues zombies would face is the rapid decay of muscle tissue. Those iconic slow shuffling movements would likely be hindered by muscle degradation, making any sort of coordinated movement quite challenging. So, in conclusion, the chances of the undead rising from their graves and causing a zombie apocalypse are about as likely as a zombie winning a marathon. Unless it's from World War Z. While the science of zombies makes for entertaining stories, it remains safely tucked away in the world of fiction and our wildest imaginations. Biologically, once you're dead, you're pretty much not coming back. But there are other methods of zombification that start with the brain. I'm sure we'll cover those in other videos. Until then, keep enjoying those zombie movies. They're much safer than the real thing. Can anyone smell fried zombie? Now, zombies are not just mindless puppets on a voodoo string. They're metaphors for our deepest fears. Fear of death, fear of the unknown, and fear that our Wi-Fi might go down during the zombie apocalypse. Calm down, Granny. Your Wi-Fi is still on. Yes, the captivating field of zombieology. It's a field where deadpan humour is always alive and kicking, or rather, should I say, shuffling. Join us next time as we look at the neuroscience of zombies. Until then, here is a quick word from Steve. <coughs> Subscribe!